Dr. Zamboni, thank you so much for joining us today. We're here at the Beast Symposium. And um, Dr. Frank Beath was um, uh, curious enough to get some more information on CCSBI and to have a session, a scientific session on CCSBI. So um, you are one of the pres presenters today. Um, I would like to kind of go over some of the things that you spoke about and maybe a little bit about some of the other information that was presented. Um, <clears throat> so first, uh, let's start with one of the topics of your talk was patient selection. How do you think that that has changed since, say, five years ago, since 2009, 2010? Have your ideas changed as far as patients that should be selected for the procedure? This is a very good question because what is really changing along these five years is our diagnostic accuracy. We certainly may improve but now we have uh, uh, developed multimodality assessment that are very well presented in the IRSPD position paper mm -hmm. that show that you may uh, study CCSVI uh, by the means of uh, different modality, not just sonography, you may use compass sonography, you may use MRV, so you may use uh, catheter venography, IVOS, retismography, new protocol of magnetic resonance, perfusion in conjunction with uh, the venous outflow from the brain. Mm -hmm. So today we have a large comprehensive uh, uh, idea that CCSBI is a true pathology, a true vascular pathology. Yes. That need to be properly studied. And uh, the result of this study, maybe, is to understand more, to characterize more CCSBI, because there is not just one type. There are intraluminal effects, uh, combined it or not with a standard compression, muscular entrapment, bone entrapment. You may have hyperplasia, aplasia, with different combinations in the different segment of the cerebrospinal drainage pathways. Yes, yeah. So in your studies and in the research that's been done in five years, um, have you um, changed your opinion as far as um, the types of um, MS that are treated more easily treated successfully are we looking at relapsing remitting um, secondary progressive primary progressive which ones do you now feel are more easily treated uh, what is changed uh, is uh, that selection may probably help us to understand who is the good candidate for a vascular procedure. So it wouldn't make any difference what type of MS they have then? Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe there are some limitation about uh, the stage of the disease. Okay. Uh, this probably uh, we are not ready. But if you should be capable to improve perfusion and to improve cerebrospinal fluid Flow. dynamics. Yes. I think that you may achieve some benefit for the patients. Of course, more benefit for early stages, but benefit also for later stages. Mm -hmm. Definitely, primary progressive is linked with the uh, impairment of the spinal cord drainage. And I am very, very surprised that five years later, nobody replicated the catheter venography study of the 
extraspinal veins and of the other gauze system yeah, uh -huh. in primary progressive. Because I think this could be the key to understand how those individuals develop more lesion in the spinal cord with respect to the brain. Go ahead. Okay. Um, next question um, about perfusion. You had started um, a small study or a small case study, and um, you presented some of that information at ISNBD. You were using uh, the PET and the SPEC scan. Um, have you? Um, do you want to update us on any of that, or was that study completed? Those case, the data is it completed now, or uh, what are you finding? Uh, we are completed the data analysis uh -huh. of uh, uh, the pilot study uh, on about 20 subjects. And uh, we are going slow because these are very, very complex vascular pictures with uh, coherent uh, pattern proven both by sonography, by MRV and catheter venography. That cannot be solved simply by PTA. Mm -hmm. So this group of patients was operated on by means of open surgery because they have combination of a lot of interluminal effects okay. with compression. Okay, so you had two different series, the, the compression and the interluminal. In combination. In combination, two of them together, okay. So this really are very interesting cases because it cannot be solved by PTA. That's right. And uh, some of those patients had two or three PTA without any kind of Results. Okay. Simply because the balloon was not the right system to solve a vascular condition associated with the mass. So those patients were operated on with open surgery and uh, we measured perfusion pre and post op. Uh -huh. And we found in this group little but significant improvement in uh, 20 brain region that were mapped by SPECT. I think this is very interesting. So, so you're talking open surgery, and this is not, uh, were you relieving, were you just open surgery on the vein? You're not relieving any compression, or were you, you were le relieving compression yes, on you, the vein? You, okay. You can. You okay. can with open surgery, you can. Uh -huh. Or maybe, if the technology should help us in the future with uh, proper stenting for venous disease. I don't know, but at the moment, stent are not available, so we choose uh, open surgery. Uh huh. And is this just, is this compression of the muscle or compression of the bone or uh, of a C1 or C2 vertebrae? Or are the we talking about? The majority of people add uh, one or two compression or entrapment by muscular entrapment in combination with intraluminal effects. Okay. So, especially with very, very long leaflet, asymmetric and not mobile leaflet, that usually does not respond to common balloon angioplasty. Okay. Um, so let's move forward here to the future. Um, there's a few trials that were mentioned today. Um, the one is being done in Canada, um, 2016, I believe they said that they thought they would be getting their results. Um, what do you think needs to be done in further trials? Are we going to wait to see how these come out before we try to move forward? Uh. What I would say, and I am very happy with this, uh, we are capable to conclude uh, the brave 
dreams yes. to in Italy because uh, uh, the recruitment will be finished uh, uh, at the end of December. So your recruitment, okay. okay. Of course, we need to wait for the final results uh, till December 2015. Okay. So I think that along 2016, we may have the results of the trial. But the recruitment is practically concluded. Okay. The study is a government study with a high quality of the data, both MRI and uh, physical examination. Mm -hmm. uh, is strictly double blinded. In the majority of cases, the procedure was performed in a different hospital, respect uh, the hospital where functional and physical assessment uh, was performed. Uh -huh. So there is no contact between interventionalist and uh, uh, treating, uh, the treating physician and sure. uh, uh, the assessor of the outcome. Okay, so we've got two trials then. We've got your brave dreams and we've got the Canadian trial. And so, so I think that this will be very important. Yes. Of course, you do not have the precision of the selection, but you need to understand uh, by analyzing the subtypes of people who should respond mm -hmm. to the treatment. What are the starting characteristics? Because this may help us also in understanding who are the best candidates to vascular treatment. For the treatment. Okay, so the next thing is, um, you know, just this past week or past couple of weeks, it, Facebook's been exploding with five-year anniversary of Dr. Zamboni on Canadian TV. So um, at, let's try to say what you were talking about then, some of the things that you were talking about then, you were just starting out. How do you think we've moved the process or the process has moved forward today? Today, I think that uh, uh, that point was really a starting point. Five yes. years ago, uh, our initial observation and pioneeristic study uh, uh, were highlighted by that TV and create uh, a big awareness uh, on a new path among the MS sufferers. And uh, of course, this generates a lot of confusion. But uh, after this phase, I think that now uh, the things are directed into the right rail because we have studied, we are increasing evidence, uh, we are responding to skeptical view, yes. we are concluding trials. We are improving our diagnostic accuracy. So I think that uh, we are really directed in a scientific way toward the understanding of the role of the venous circulation uh, for generating neurological symptoms or neurological features. Sure. Um, Another thing is, just in the past month, we were all disappointed that the equipment that you had on um, a rocket that was going into space and was going to be used on the space station, um, that it exploded. Um, do you want to update us on that this, a little bit? This was a really terrible moment for me because it was unbelievable, really. Uh, I trust uh, a lot in that experiment because uh, ISS is a unique place for understanding the role of gravitation yes. in uh, uh, cardiovascular situation. And this uh, uh, was or probably maybe is the first experiment addressed in understanding the environment of cerebral venous retard, maybe in generating symptoms of discomfort uh, 
uh, that actually are not displayed in, in the abstract. Mm -hmm. uh, what the, my hypothesis is absence of gravity cre may create a slow blood flow from the brain. Something like a CCSPI condition. Yes. And this may be, could be measured uh, with the new diagnostic test uh, that I hope to transfer to MS or to neurological patients in the, in the, mm -hmm. in the close future and may be connected with symptoms. This is our hope. And uh, uh, the last new seems to be good because maybe we would be capable, uh, despite the explosion, to have a new rocket uh, and to deliver uh, the equipment to the astronaut. Yes. Well, correct me on this, but I have, if I remember correctly, um, astronauts that come back from space, that some of them do exhibit symptoms that are similar to MS. Is this? Yes. Are you aware because, of this? Or uh, you... Because uh, uh, they have fog, uh -huh. they have uh, some uh, uh, seeing disturbances, they have headache. So they have, uh, they develop in uh, four or five months uh, symptoms that are common with neurological what? diseases, okay. especially with, with a mess. So the hypothesis is that the absence of gravity uh, may affect uh, in a significant way cerebral venous retirement. Uh -huh. This was accepted by the commission scientific commission of uh, the Italian and the American Space Agency. So this is very so it's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting, yeah, yes, it's it's exciting to see you we may your space odyssey. The physiology through the space. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Well, you know, I remember um, one of my uh, recall moments uh, hearing you speak at the University of New York. I think this was in early 2010, Content. one of your first... I think February. Yes, yes. And one of the things that you said in your talk, in your presentation, um, and as a neophyte into myself, into any kind of medical um, education, you mentioned that it would take 10,000 papers probably, research papers, before this got solved. And I'm just... I thought, oh no, this is way too long. Um, but we're getting there. I, I think on our website, we now have links to like 400 research, close to 400 research papers and abstracts. And we don't, you know, all of ours are the peer reviewed or things that have been published in peer reviewed journals. So um, there has been in five years time, a lot of research. Um, some of them are, you know, go off onto different directions. Some of them on the oxygen and different things. So we need to know everything. So I welcome any kind of research uh -huh. that may help us and understand more because we know very few things, and this was a neglected part of the knowledge of neuroscience. So I am very glad that. Uh, so spontaneous research uh, uh, are growing around the world. And uh, uh, if you look to Google Scholar, really, uh, our pioneeristic uh, paper is uh, used uh, from yes. hundreds of researchers. So I think that this was exactly what I opened uh, five years ago mm -hmm. in uh, NYU. Yes, yes. Okay, well, I know that you uh, need to get ready to leave uh, um, on your way back home to Italy. Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing maybe just real briefly, um, the International Society Neurovascular Disease, um, their conference is coming up. Um, do you want to just briefly talk a little bit about that? It's in your home country of Italy. Yes, I think the, the group in Italy uh, 
who is organizing the ISDB is a very good group of uh -huh. people. Uh, they are doing extensively research, uh, experimental and clinical research for CCSDI. It's a very good group. Also connected with the National Research Council because the director is, uh, uh, is the chief of the scientific organization. Professor Salvatore is, is the president of the the meeting is a perfect position because he is a radiologist. So he's uh, in, in the middle of, of the way between vascular and neurologist. Yeah. And so I think that uh, the venue is really great. Yes, the program. Oh, well, the venue. The yes. The venue and yes. the program are really very good. Uh -huh. uh, so I think that it definitely would be a great meeting. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us here today at the V Symposium. I uh, appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us and safe travels home. Thank you.